Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to News 3 Now, live at 4. It's, it's Friday! Friday. <laughs> what a week this has been. Did you hear the ice quakes last yes, night? Last night and this morning. I was so scared. I actually put on my coat. I walked outside and walked around the perimeter of my house. I thought someone was on my roof. Oh, you've never heard? We've had these before at my house. Did you know what they were? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know what they were until I saw everybody on social media. Louie, the little it. dog, started barking and running around. <laughs> he didn't know exactly what it was. But we'll have more it on that. caused a commotion. Yeah, we'll have more of that coming up. But first, here's what's making news on this Friday. Rose Schmidt investigates why a man charged with a violent assault in Madison never serve time for an armed robbery on the UW Whitewater campus. Acting Attorney General Matthew Whitaker was on the hot seat on Capitol Hill facing questions about the Russia investigation. And federal prosecutors are investigating whether the National Enquirer's parent company violated laws involving the world's richest person. Let's take a look outside today with the sunshine. It was so beautiful. It, it was, was very but cold, but it was so pretty. Just don't try and walk. No, it was, it's very oh, slippery. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's a nightmare out there. Look at this, the cold's ending, that's good. Now snow arrives. Dave Caulfield's in the backyard weather patio. Good for you, any other news? Yeah, the cold hasn't ended just yet, I can attest to that, but it will uh, be coming to an end as we uh, get into the next couple of days. And as we head into this weekend, we turn our attention to an active weather pattern and the snow on the way for Sunday and for Tuesday. If we could switch over to Max 2, guys, when you guys get a chance, uh, we could start to talk about the uh, the cold that's still here. We still do have some uh, wind chill advisories. There we go. A live look in Madison. We have some ice on our tower camera, so it actually looks like there's some mountains off in the distance. Also, we're just looking at Madison, so that's not the case. It's all depending on your perspective. So today, temperatures in the single digits outside. Right now at 8 degrees in Madison, 10 in Janesville, and 8 in Monroe. Wind speeds out of the north and west at about 5 to 15 miles per hour, making it feel like below zero in Madison and pretty much everywhere across southern Wisconsin. So this cold, not exactly done with us yet, but we will get a little bit better into this weekend. As I mentioned, some of us still under a wind chill advisory until 9 a.m. tomorrow morning, generally north and west of Madison, but still wind chills of minus 10 to minus 20 are possible as we start off Saturday morning and temperatures will quickly fall below zero into bitterly cold levels as we get into tonight and tomorrow morning. So let's take a look at your first alert traffic update. We just had a, a couple of incidents pop up, in fact, across Dane County and on the Beltline as well. We do have an accident showing up on downtown. We're starting to see some of those delays pile up. It is Friday afternoon in Madison after all. So your drive times are on the road to eastbound to John Nolan. That's 17 minutes, so that's pretty slow. Average speed of around 15 miles per hour. Some other routes in and around Madison not looking too bad. The Beltline southbound to Janesville. 27 minutes with an average speed of around 65 miles per hour. And that's your first alert traffic update. We'll talk more about the active weather and the couple of snow systems on the way in your first alert forecast in just a few minutes. All right, come on in, thought. All Thank right. you, Dave. <laughs> Thank you, Dave. First at four, we're digging more today into the criminal past of the man accused of attacking a woman on the UW Madison campus. We've learned 22 year old Jerome Winslow was charged in 2017 in Jefferson County, along with his charges out of Dane County. Rose Schmidt tells us what happened and what the district attorney there advocated for. Rose? Yes, well, Mark and Susan, we've told you about Jerome Winslow, who Madison police say attacked a UW Madison student last weekend, putting her in the hospital with extensive injuries. But before this week, documents show he had previously committed three violent crimes in Dane County. But let's rewind two years ago to Jefferson County. Court documents show in 2017, Winslow robbed a man at gunpoint on the UW Whitewater campus and a police officer became injured while chasing him. Winslow was charged with armed robbery, pointing a gun at someone, and resisting an officer. Jefferson County District Attorney Susan Happ recommended two and a half years in prison and five years of extended supervision. But Winslow never served a day in prison. They had tried to do what they could with this young offender, but once he picks up my case, um, it's his fourth um, violent offense. Um, and so despite the fact that he was young, from my perspective, there could be no um, other outcome or recommendation other than prison. 
Hap says when re making recommendations, DAs take into account not only the seriousness of a crime, but also the defendant's positive attributes. She says he had family support and character letters, but she outweighed those things with a need to protect the public, something she feels very strongly that she needed to do. And in that Jefferson County case, the judge sentenced Winslow to three years in prison with five years of supervision, but then the court stayed that sentence, placing Winslow on probation for six years. And for his alleged attack this week, Winslow was arrested for violating probation. All right, Rose Schmidt reporting for us. Thank you. Thank you, Rose. Acting Attorney General Matthew Whitaker spent weeks preparing for today's oversight hearing in front of the House Judiciary Committee. He's facing questions from the new Democratic majority about his oversight of special counsel Robert Mueller's Russia investigation. Nicole Killian reports from Capitol Hill. Acting Attorney General Matthew Whitaker faced a grilling about his oversight of special counsel Robert Mueller's Russia investigation. But you wouldn't oversee a witch hunt, would you? You'd stop a witch hunt, wouldn't you? Congressman, uh, it would be inappropriate for me to talk about an ongoing investigation. Whitaker repeatedly tried to reassure Democrats he has not curtailed the investigation. I have not interfered in any way with the special counsel's investigation. Lawmakers expressed concern about Whitaker's criticism of the probe before he joined the Department of Justice. It's really hard to imagine uh, that he uh, did not talk to Donald Trump about his opinions about Bob Mueller. Republicans say today's hearing has little to do with congressional oversight of the Department of Justice. It's really disappointing. At first I was mad. I have to tell you, when this thing started hours ago, I went outside and a reporter asked me, what do you think of the hearing? And I said, it's a joke. And they repeatedly objected to the pointed questioning from Democrats. As I previously answered, Congresswoman, I have not discussed... Yes or no? Mr. Yes. Chairman, if the, if the Department of Inquiry, if, the, if he has, feels that a yes or no is appropriate, he'll answer in a yes or no. If he does not feel it's appropriate, he should be able to answer in, in the appropriate. I will not allow the witness to stall and waste members' time. Mr. Whitaker also testified that he's comfortable with his decision not to recuse himself from the Mueller investigation, despite DOJ ethics lawyers' advice he should do so. In Washington, Nicole Killian for News 3 Now. And Whitaker's time as acting attorney general is likely coming to an end very soon, with the Senate expected to vote to confirm President Trump's attorney general nominee, William Barr, next week. The world's richest man is in a high-stakes clash with America's best-known tabloid. Amazon CEO Jeff Bezos posted a blog accusing the National Enquirer of extortion and blackmail relating to the Enquirer's expose of his extramarital affair with Lauren Sanchez. Bezos hired an investigator to find out how the Inquirer got hold of his personal text messages and pictures. Bezos claims the Inquirer threatened to publish a below-the-belt selfie if he didn't stop the investigation. Bezos owns the Washington Post and believes the Inquirer is politically motivated because of its close association with President Trump. When was the last time the president talked to David Pecker? I'm not aware. Is the president aware of the uh, Bezos situation? What's the White House reaction? Uh, I'm not sure if he's aware of it, and we're not going to get into a conversation about something between Jeff Bezos and a tabloid magazine. AMI responded in a statement that it believes it acted lawfully in the reporting of the Bezos story. Nonetheless, the board has determined that it should promptly and thoroughly investigate the claims. The Supreme Court blocked a controversial abortion law last night, hours before it was set to go into effect. The 5-4 to four vote temporarily blocked a law in Louisiana that would have required doctors who perform abortions at clinics to have admitting privileges at nearby hospitals. Concern Conservative Chief Justice John Roberts sided with the court's four liberal judges to stop the law from taking effect while the court considers if it will hear the case. The court's four conservatives, conservatives dissented, including the newest justice, Brett Kavanaugh. The court still has to decide in the next few months whether to hear the case next term. Five-time Oscar nominee Albert Finney has died. The British actor was best known for his roles in Annie, Aaron Brockovich, and Tom Jones. He died at a hospital in London after a short illness. Born in Salford, England, to a working-class family, Finley began his career as a Shakespearean actor. He became a household name when he was cast as the lead in Tom Jones in 1963. Albert Finney was 82 years old. Well, as we talked about at the beginning of this broadcast, many of you heard a loud, booming noise last night and were wondering, what was that? Well, we're learning now what happened is a phenomenon called ice quakes. Our Jamie Perez is here now to explain this 
mysterious winter <laughs> happening, Jamie. Yeah, it's pretty mysterious, but our meteorologist actually put something out last night explaining what those loud noises were. By the way, the Facebook comments you all made were hilarious, by the way. I'll share some of those coming up tonight at 6. But in case you did not see it, an ice quake happens when water freezes underground, expands, and then creates a loud noise. Ice cracks all the time in winter. It's just typically not loud enough for us to be able to hear. Now, some of you may be wondering, does this affect the foundation of your home? We asked an expert to explain. You have to be really unlucky uh, to have foundation damage from an ice quake. And uh, your, your foundation would already have to be close to, you know, some point of, of giving way. Um, and, and if it were at that state, then an ice quake, the shaking from an ice quake might uh, um, cause a crack to grow larger or become visible. And some people were also asking why they could hear the boom coming from the roof or the side of their homes if it was originating from the ground. Well, Chuck also explained that if you have a low frequency inside of your home, it could cause your roof to flex, making it sound like the roof is booming as well. It might be better to ask a as well. But there you have it, mystery solved. Thank goodness, because <laughs> it was on my roof too, and I couldn't yeah. figure that out. Yeah, a lot of people were asking, so hopefully that answers some it of your does. questions. It does. We're all still here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Jamie, thank you. Thank you, Jamie. Are you looking to escape the frozen tundra, at least for a little while this weekend? Well, you might want to head to the Alliant Energy Center to check out the Garden Expo. It's back this weekend, and Lisa Briggs is there live. She'll let us know what you'll see when you attend this weekend. Hi, Lisa.
Welcome back. MIT researchers invented a high-tech pill that could one day put an end to insulin injections for people with diabetes. One swallowed, the pill gradually dissolves and then injects insulin or other medicines directly into the stomach wall. It successfully lowered blood sugar levels in pigs. Researchers hope to begin human testing within three years. They say the oral pill could also replace injections for people with cancer or other diseases. A stunning 1939 Alfa Romeo was sold for an equally stunning price at a Paris car auction. The sparkling red Alfa Romeo Tour Touring Berlinetta went for about $19 million. While that price tag may seem high, keep in mind the car survived World War II without a scratch. The Alfa's current owner watched his father buy the car in 1976 and for reasons not explained has decided to part with it. Only five of them were made. That is a stunning car. Stocks were mixed as trade truce prospects fade. The Dow Industrials lost 63 points, ending the week at 63,000. 63, Trying to say that, 27. The NASDAQ Composite Index added 9. The S&P 500 was off almost 2. Well, if you need a dose of the sights and smells of spring, <laughs> head to the Alliant Energy Center this weekend. Yes, we do. The 26th <laughs> Annual Wisconsin Public Television Garden and Landscape Expo starts today and runs through Sunday at Exhibition Hall. Lisa Briggs from The Bruce Company is there live. She joins us from the expo with a sneak peek. Oh, look at the seeds. You're Hi, making Lisa. us jealous. Hi, Lisa. I know. <laughs> So tell, tell us a little bit about this year's expo. Well, the expo to me is always the first sign of spring. And so we love the expo. It's a great uh, way to experience a little bit of spring in the midst of the winter weather that we're having. There are lots of great educational things to do, lots of seminars, talks. Um, all of the local garden clubs and botanical gardens are um, represented here. So you can stop and talk to the folks from Olbrick. If you're a hosta person, you can visit the Hosta Society. So there's great things to not only to shop, but also to learn a lot about gardening. I'm looking at the notes here and I'm seeing botanical themed craft cocktails. <laughs> Tell us more. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There is one, and what they're going to talk about is how to make cocktails with botanical things. So maybe how to put some fruits and vegetables into your cocktails and make them maybe a little bit nutritious. Wow. <laughs> now, are you attending just as a spectator, or are you actually one of the exhibitors? Yes, we are. The Bruce Company is here. We've been here, I think, from the beginning. Um, when we first started, we were just a landscape booth, but now it's all retail. And so our big claim to fame are seeds. And so I counted today and we have 1,577 different varieties of seeds, including uh, 141 tomato varieties and 50 varieties of sunflower. So something for everybody. Yes, that's quite a selection. And there's also a series of seminars exploring the best in landscape and landscaping advice. That's sort of up your alley. <laughs> Yes, and, and there's lots of opportunities. All of the folks from the Bruce Company are here. Whether you have questions for Matt, the seed guy, or you want to talk to Gail about some kind of problem that you're having with your lawn, we've got tools. And there are lots of folks from other organizations and other retail places here, too. So lots of great experience and knowledge that you can tap into. Even if you're not a gardener, it's a fun place to be this weekend. What is uh, over your shoulder? Those, that's another wall of seed packets. So you're in like the seed mall right now. Yes, this is Seed Savers. Okay. Seed Savers is out of Decorah, Iowa. And they're super cool because they're an actual, uh, they're a seed bank, a certified seed bank. So what they do is they collect all kinds of varieties of seeds from all over the world, a lot of heirloom varieties, and then they hold them in safety so that you don't lose that biodiversity. We actually, and they actually have a working farm that you can go and visit. Yeah, we actually visited there a That's few right. years ago when yeah. we went to Decor to we did. check out the eagles. And there's plants for sale, all that good stuff? Uh, we've got tools, we've got lots of seed, uh, spring flowering bulbs, um, some really fun sort of um, toys that you can, you know, like yard games and gardening hats, just a lot of garden paraphernalia. All right, just get through the ice so you can get to the, the garden yeah, show. So you can get to spring. Yeah, that's right. Uh, Have thanks, a good weekend, Lisa. Thank you, Lisa. Enjoy it. Yep. All right.
Thank you, Lisa. And we'll be right back. <laughs> oh, here we go. That's the Garden Shows tonight until 8, Saturday from 9 to 6, Sunday from 10 to 4. Go to wigardenexpo.com. Tickets, by the way, are $8 in advance. They're $10 at the door. And now, we'll be right back. <laughs> Take a look at this. Check out this self-portrait by artist Thomas Dininger. If you go in for a closer inspection, it looks completely different. The art oh. artwork is oh, made up wow. of objects including dolls, mesh shoes, pearls, and ribbons. Thomas specializes in using found things to create incredible art that changes based on perspective. We wait, get a, another wide shot of this. Look at that. That is amazing. Isn't that cool? Yeah. Wow. Sort of like Dave. You move in close to Dave and the whole thing changes. <laughs> You'll find like dirty shoes. Is that what you're trying to say? <laughs> Found item. That's a legend. That, that is slander right there. Zoom in for a close up. No, <laughs> yeah. don't. Oh, no, no. Get it out of here. <laughs> so it's going to be an active period. Yeah. First of all, sorry you all at home have to see that. Uh, it's going to be active. At least we get rid of the bitter cold past tonight. We still have to uh, worry about that tonight, but into the weekend. We can calm down a little bit, and then we have to talk about snow systems. And maybe if you just want to change your perspective, the left half of the camera <laughs> is for you. But it's like a Monet. <laughs> we'll talk about the weather for the right half of that camera coming up right after this.
Good afternoon. I hope you're having a really nice Friday so far. At least we got the sunshine out on this Friday, but it has been bitterly cold throughout much of the day, and we're still dealing with the ice from the past few days across southern Wisconsin. Even the birds are having to deal with this, so I call this picture Ice Ice Birdie. No copyright infringement intended. Vanilla ice, please don't come after me. We are looking at this uh, photo from Monroe. Thank you, Ralph Johnson, for sending in this photo. We really do appreciate it, and we appreciate you trying to have some fun with this cold weather outside. At least we're not seeing anything on Doppler track that is quiet across much of the Midwest, and that includes across southern Wisconsin. We saw just a little bit of everything yesterday. We saw gusty winds, we saw snow, sleet, freezing rain, rain. We experienced ice quakes overnight and by the time everything was said and done, Madison picking up about a quarter of an inch of ice. We do have more alert days in the forecast coming up. The first one is tonight for overnight lows near about minus 10. Wind chills of minus 10 to minus 20 are possible. Now on Sunday and Tuesday, we turn our attention away from the cold to some snow on the way. A quick system on Sunday could bring us about one to four inches of accumulation. On Tuesday, especially during the morning hours, some heavy snow is possible. So we're watching that very closely. We could be talking about some significant accumulations there. So stay tuned for that. Wind chill advisory in effect for spots north and west of Lone Rock until 9 a.m. tomorrow. So a little bit closer to the Mississippi River Valley. Those wind chills could be a little bit less in the order of about 20 to 30 below zero. The rest of us, a balmy minus 10 to minus 20 overnight. We're still going to have to deal with that bitter cold into tomorrow. Platteville, one of those spots that could see wind chills dip below minus 20 on our Queen Bee Radio Skycam. At least we're looking at wall to wall sunshine. A similar story in Madison on the Edgewater Skycam. For the Almanac today, single digits for highs and our low of minus two. Normal is about 30 degrees, so we're running about 20 to 25 degrees below where we should be for this time of year. Eight in Madison, six in the Dells, six in Platteville, and seven in Monroe right now, but with wind speeds out of the north and west at about 8 to 15 miles per hour. It feels a little bit closer to minus three in Madison, minus eight in Watertown, minus nine in Juneau, and minus 10 in the Dell. So wind chills are going to continue to tumble as we head into this evening and the overnight hours. We're pushing numbers about minus 20 to minus 25 in southern Wisconsin. So tonight, Temperatures will fall to around minus 10, bitterly cold with wind chills to about minus 20 to minus 25. Then for tomorrow, not as cold. And then we get cloudy in the afternoon and evening in advance of that next snow system on the way. Temperatures will be in the upper teens. So at least we get the double digits above zero tomorrow. That's uh, pretty much all I can give you in the positive news department there. But on future track, we're noticing the clouds get out of here and that's actually going to allow those temperatures to dip close to minus 10 as we get into the overnight hours and to start Saturday. Highs will be in the upper teens, close to 20 degrees, with more sunshine on the way for tomorrow. But then the clouds increase, and we get that snow system to move in during the day on Sunday and could impact us into Sunday night as well. Generally talking about minor snow totals, about one to three inches, maybe a little bit no, uh, farther north, we get a little bit more in the order of two to four inches. So on our 10 day forecast, we have a lot to talk about. What else is new? It is winter in Wisconsin after all. We have alert days in the forecast for tonight, Sunday and Tuesday. Again, Monday night to Tuesday, we'll have to watch very, very closely because we could see some heavy snow just in time for the Tuesday morning commute, which could cause more problems on the roadways. Just what we need at this point. Wednesday, we're quiet down just for a little bit. And for all those romantics out there, keep this in mind because Valentine's Day night, we could see a little bit of snow. So if you have dinner plans on Valentine's Day, maybe downtown or something like that, you will have to keep in mind that a little bit of snow is possible. You may have to navigate that. Like snow every other day. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Can you work on the timing and not do the commutes? Mm, I mean, I can work on it. I don't know if it's going to do much good. <laughs> no, it's always the timing is yeah. always tricky. Yeah. yeah. So hopefully it avoids us. This time. Active pattern. Yeah. All right, Dave. Thank you. Thank you, Dave. Now, tomorrow, meteorologist Chris Reese will be here. He'll keep you up to date on the weather Saturday and Sunday morning. And then on News 3 on Sunday, stay tuned for CBS Sunday Morning. Jane Pauly joining us now, and good afternoon to you. Hey, Mark, how are you? We're doing great. We understand you have a lot coming up on Sunday morning, including a piece on Dolly Parton. 
I always got a lot, but uh, we do have one of the most universally beloved figures in entertainment. This week, it's Dolly Parton, not only one of country music's brightest stars, but a prolific and successful songwriter. And let's not forget her film career, Steel Magnolias, 9 to 5. And at age 73, Dolly is still at it, as Tony DeCopel finds out. Here's a clip. Yeah, people always say, uh, why don't you retire? I said, and do what? I mean, I mean, what, are you, what does that even mean? Sit on your pile I of money and awards. I could never do that. I don't care. I always count my blessings more than I count my money. I don't work for money, never did. I just wanted, it was the art. It was the job. I love the work. And I've done well, and I'm thankful for it. You know, Mark, I've had the pleasure of interviewing Dolly a couple times myself over the years, and she is truly, a, she really is a doll, yeah, absolutely. She, yeah, she's a remarkable woman, that's mm -hmm. for sure. So what else is on the show on Sunday morning? Well, Leslie Stahl is coming over from 60 Minutes. She joins us with a profile of Oscar-nominated director Spike Lee and a couple heads up for Valentine's Day. Diamonds may be forever, but we'll tell you why rubies give them a run for the money. <laughs> Plus, how pink became a power color. I'm feeling real powerful today, as you see. Yes, that indeed. and a whole lot more. Yeah, we'll bundle up, throw in the coffee, and see you at 8 o'clock. Have a great weekend, Jane. <laughs> All right. Bye-bye. I love Sunday morning. It looks like, oh, I never miss it. Must I, I see thought, TV. I thought it was a red, red <laughs> question. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe it's some color problems. Anyway. <laughs> Sunday morning, 8 o'clock. It yeah. broke the box office five years ago, and now those Lego movie stars are back. We'll preview the Lego Movie 2, the second part, <laughs> when News 3 Now Live at 4 continues.
looks can be deceiving. Oh, that's for sure. <laughs> the sun is just bright, but not warm. That's for sure. A cold UW Madison campus. Well, five years ago, many people thought a movie about Legos was kid stuff. Maybe, but the resulting franchise has made nearly a billion dollars worldwide. David Daniels looks at the latest adventures starring everyone's favorite plastic figures. This is my vision of the future. Ta-da! A house? Come on, let me give you the tour. Toy Box heroes Emmett and Lucy are back in The Lego Movie 2, the second part. The sequel brings back writer-producers Phil Lord and Christopher Miller. We knew we, we had something that we were really proud of, but you never know if audiences are going to connect to it. And the way that they did was beyond our wildest imaginations. This time, it's all about how do we beat expectations. There were none the first time around. Nobody expected us to do anything. Now people are like, we love it. Please don't ruin it. <laughs> The name's Rex. Rex Danger Vest. Galaxy Defending Archaeologist. Cowboy. Raptor Trainer. Who likes building furniture, buzzing heads, and having chiseled features previously hidden under baby fat. Chris Pratt voices Emmett and a new character who will seem familiar to fans of Pratt's recent work. Lauren and Miller, when writing this, uh, dove headfirst into the idea of lampooning my career over the past few years, and I welcomed it so much. I was so honored to be able to be a part of the zeitgeist that they're they're known for mining comedy from. Will you help me rescue my friends? You don't want to go anywhere near the Sistar system. A boy's imagination fueled the first film's action. The sequel brings in a girl's point of view. She's controlling the whole world of Lego, where she's building whatever she wants. And these new things are her in her imagination, and she's building them. Who are you? I'm your worst nightmare. You're me when I'm late to school and I forgot my homework and my pants are made of pudding? No, I don't. Huh. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. You saw the first the one. The first one was great. Yeah, it yeah. looks funny. We'll find out what Will Loper thinks about it. He's with us on Monday here on Live at Four. But when we come back, we hit the road with Michael Bruno. We're going backstage in McFarland. The guys from Ice, the guys from Guys on Ice have a special benefit performances this month. We'll go backstage with Michael when Live at Four continues.
Good afternoon. Here is your Friday first alert traffic update on the Beltline. As you might expect, Friday afternoon, it is looking a little bit messy in both directions. We're starting to see those delays pile up right in that midsection there. We'll zoom in so we can see just a little bit more of what's going on downtown. Also starting to see a few brake lights as well. Average speeds on the Beltline are about 10 to 25 miles per hour, especially eastbound. Here are some drive times. Verona Road to John Nolan, very slow right now 22 minutes there was a report of an accident uh, on the Beltline a few minutes ago that has gone away on our traffic maps but still some residual delays might be there average speed right around 10 miles per hour and on the other direction also noticing some slowdowns from University Ave eastbound to the interstate that's 37 minutes with an average speed of around 25 miles per hour and that's your first alert traffic update all right Dave thank you haagen has something new and it's extra boozy the ice cream company is rolling out several seven flavors of alcohol-infused ice cream treats. Some of the flavors include rum tre leche, bourbon vanilla bean truffle, and a non-dairy amaretto black cherry almond toffee. But don't get too excited. You're probably not going to get drunk off these special treats. Each product contains less than 0.5% alcohol by volume. It will be available by April. Oh, they sound good, though, don't they? I don't know if they got to sell in the liquor store or the grocery store. Probably the, well, that's a good question. I don't know. I don't know. All right, well, pretty much everybody in southern Wisconsin is guys <laughs> or gals on ice these days. Boy, that's for sure. But the original guys on ice from the popular local play are on the road this week. They're performing in McFarland, and it's all for a good cause. Our Michael Bruno travels to McFarland to go backstage with Guys on Ice. With a roof overhead and a truck that'll run Till hell freezes up and a rack for your gun It starts with just the two guys doing their normal everyday things, which is just to show up and get their holes dug out, get set up, try to catch some fish. You know, we got that ice fishing and uh, you, you think you know what you're doing. Like, I know I don't know what I'm doing, so. And then they just start talking about life, and then as that happens, things start coming out about both of them. Tootie toot toot from the top of your hat to the tip of your boot. My character, Ernie the Moocher, is an ice fisherman that likes to get as much out of other ice fishermen as possible, like food, beverages, mostly beer, and usually makes makes entries into people's ice chanties to see what they will give him, hence the name Moocher to mooch off everything that someone else has. For a parka or coat, I don't give a hoot. For the best thing of all is a snowmobile suit. And then it turns into almost a, I don't know, a heartfelt show. I mean, it gets, uh, uh, there's a couple moments where you, you kind of get a little teary, I think. At least I do, anyway. Uh, it's, it turned into a really beautiful moment between two, you know, guys, guys that are trying to deal with this stuff at home. He is a bachelor ice fisherman, and he has sent in his picture of his shanty to a cable fishing show and they picked him to do a segment on ice fishing and he has got his buddy to come out to the shanty to tell a few fish stories and get off a few jokes. So I, I'm Lloyd and uh, apparently what it seems like in the show is that Marv and I have been friends for a long time so uh, it wasn't unusual for him to call me and say hey do you want to come fish over at, at my place over at my shanty this time uh, so we just hang out for the day and, and as that happens we find out that he's got this guy coming this Covey Cabernon, this TV fishing show guy, right? And so we're going to be on TV apparently later on in the day. So many things that a snowsuit can do. Tell me a little bit about the show and who it benefits. So this show is a benefit for the McFarland Food Pantry, and it's our sixth annual production that we've done for the benefit of the food pantries. And then the money that we raise goes to help um, with food subsidies, with um, improving their space. They've moved into a new space this last year. And in the past five years, we've raised over $50,000 for the pantry through these performances. So we're hoping that this year's another big one. When it's dirty below, there is no substitute for the shirt thing, you bet. Satisfaction, no regret. Surprise, surprise, you surprise you go get snowmobile suit. 
<laughs> Michael's here now. So these are not the, it's not the original guys. No, these are not the original guys. These are local actors from McFarland, and uh, they're doing it as a benefit for the food pantry. That's, That's what they're allowed to do this the, to do the show. There. This show is so funny <laughs> and, and really poignant, as they say in the piece. Where are they performing it in McFarland? Uh, they're performing it at the local church. Uh, I believe it's the the MCC church. UCC. The UCC. Yes, the UCC church in McFarland. They do that there every year. They, they the church lets them come in. Uh, and do the benefit for the food pantry there every year. Sixth annual. Yes. She said $50,000. Yeah, that's, they raise a lot of good. money. It's really a wonderful, wonderful cause. Yeah. And it's perfect weather for them to do it. <laughs> no, the timing they, is everything. Yes, yeah. Because they are yeah. on ice. If you can get through the ice, to get to them. <laughs> and, okay, let's tell folks specifically, it's Guys on Ice, McFarland UCC Church. It's tonight and tomorrow. And then, again, February 14th through the 16th, 7.30. Tickets are $20. Go to Guys on on oh. icemcfarland.bpt.me. What does yeah. all that mean? <laughs> it's guys on ice McFarland, uh, bpt me. That's what that means. It's all code. <laughs> it's, all, it's all about you. All right. <laughs> so next week. Uh, next week it'll be uh, Henry the Fourth Part Two. Oh. At uh, Madison Shakespeare at the Bartell Theater. Uh, a little class. A little class for me. A little, a with the new set. A little class. <laughs> yes. I, see, I see you wore a sweater. Yes, yeah, I, 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 I You look I'm, very I'm sharp. Very classy now. <laughs> what do you think? Yes, that's lovely. Yes. Beautiful. Yeah, you Absolutely. Look, you look beautiful. great. Yes, very nice. <laughs> perfect lighting. Yes, it is perfect lighting. <laughs> Michael, thank Thanks, you. Michael. so young. That's all looks so young. <laughs> Have a good weekend. <laughs> and we'll be right back with the final check of your forecast. Well, if you can navigate the ice, it yeah. might be a good time to get out this weekend before the snow hits on Sunday. Right. Temperatures will moderate as we uh, get into tomorrow, but for right now, they're still pretty cold tonight into tomorrow morning. So we're at 8 in Madison right now, 7 in Monroe, 6 in Prairie du Chien. Do I say a 5 there? 5 in Watoma, 4 <laughs> in Camp Douglas, 3, three. in Viroqua. Oh, there's no 2 there. 1 in Black River Falls. <laughs> uh, two, or 3 re repeat mm -hmm. steps, 1 through 3 or whatever that song is. Um, uh, wind chills are uh, below zero right now, and they'll remain that way as we get into the overnight hours, actually bottoming out between minus 20 and minus 25. Wind chill advisory in effect once again for spots north and west of Lone Rock into tomorrow morning. And your day plan are showing the temperatures finally moderating tomorrow. Highs will be in the upper teens, close to 20 degrees. A little bit more sunshine comes our way, and then some snow comes our way on Sunday 
possibly just in time for Tuesday morning. As Sunday, well. we're looking at one to four. You yeah, said? one to four. That looks a little bit more minor, especially compared to the potential system on Tuesday. But it's on top of all that ice. Exactly. Yeah. We, we just need to calm down for a couple of minutes. Can we do that, Mother Nature? <laughs> Please. Yeah. Just give us a break. Exactly. All right, Dave. Thank you. And Monday here on Live at Four, it is the 50th anniversary of the Black Student Strike on the UW campus. We'll talk with some of the original organizers. And our film critic Will Loper will be here to tell us what he thinks of the Lego Movie 2, the second part. That's Monday on Live at Four. Well, with the debut of our new set this week, we thought it might be time to bring back a classic. Fans of the Lowdown Animal Update will remember it used to be called the News Hound. With the passing of the original News Hound, Esty, a year and a half ago it's been a already. Long time wow. Already. We decided to rename the segment Lola's Lowdown. But now that our newest canine correspondent, Louie, has graduated from his internship, we decided to honor Esty's legacy. So we're proud to present the premiere of the News Hounds Update. It's News Hound Update with Lola and Louie. This week on the News Hounds Update, it's Poodoo Mania in L.A. Mom has to make a tough decision, go for a walk or stay with her babies. And a lost elephant seal needs some help. But first, some spectacular rare footage of four Amur tiger cubs playing and resting in the wilds of Russia's Far East region. The video was captured by a hidden camera installed in the land of the Leopard National Park. The four cubs are seen playing with each other throughout the day. Mom is there in the morning, but then leaves for most of the day, probably hunting. It's very rare to capture capture such young tigers on a camera. So this is very special. K-pop fans have reason to head to the LA Zoo. It's all because of this tiny poodoo. The fawn was born last month and quickly gained a following on social media with K-pop fans calling it Baby Hessian. He's a member of the Korean boy band NCT. Poodoo happens to be his nickname. Anyway, when the zoo caught wind of all this, it said fans could name the baby after the singer if they donated $2,000. It took three hours to reach that goal, 
Zookeepers hope the little deer will meet the boy bander in real life one day. An elephant seal needed a little help in San Luis Obispo County. Three sheriff's deputies were glad to help the big guy back to the ocean. Her